All right, guys, so today's the big day. We're putting the roof on. Yesterday, I put all the tar paper on and the drip edge. As you can see, that's all ready to go. I struggled uh, with that a little bit. Uh, if you want to watch the video on that, I'll drop a link uh, right above right now. Um, so our first step to starting the roof is our starter shingles, right? So um, a starter shingle basically has a tar line on it. And after the shingles get hot from the sun, it allows the shingles on top of the starter shingle to adhere to it. And it keeps them from like kind of flopping up if you get a strong wind or breeze or uh, hurricane, whatever. So this is what they look like. Uh, and I'm using a GAF series here because I wanted it to match my house for the shingles. So I just stuck with all GAF. Um, and these are GAF, uh, I think they're called Starter Pro, GAF Pro Start. <laughs> Had it backwards. So um, these are the starter strip shingles. This entire package should be more than enough to do the shed roof here. Um, it's about 240 square feet plus or minus. Um, so these are actually two starter strips in one. And if you flip it over, you'll notice there's a perforation on it here. So all you do to split these apart is just take them, bend them on that perforation. Bend them right in half and bam. Now here's your tar strip. So once the sun starts beating on the roof after the roof is uh, completely installed, this will soften up and it'll adhere, adhere to the bottom side of the shingles on top of it and keep them from flapping around. So my first step is to take a bunch of these and just kind of break them apart so I don't have to do it um, as I'm installing them. And I'm gonna install these on the eave and gable side of the roof. All right, guys, so we're starting the roof now. So our first step is to put our starter shingles on. I took the very first one that's going on the eave side and I trimmed 10 inches off of that. Right, we don't want the line of the starter shingles to ever match up with the shingles that are going on top of them because you will get water penetration, you will get leaks. So to, to match up your starter shingles from the eave to the gable side, like I mentioned earlier in the video when I was separating these, right, we want them to be like this so you have your tar strip along the whole thing, right? We don't want it to be like this because then you have this like four or five inches that doesn't have any tar and this shingle, if it was windy, has the possibility of lifting. So we want this one on the bottom, that one on the top. So we're gonna bring this off about a quarter inch. I'm just gonna stick my finger into the drip edge here. The drip edge is about an inch. And I'm gonna bring it kind of right to the crease on my finger and that's gonna be my guide. So we'll get one nail right here. And we look pretty straight. And then we just continue our course all the way down the length with a full starter strip, same up and over the gable side. All right, so if you look here, you'll notice this very first one, like I mentioned, I cut 10 off of there. So all the rest of them now are full length. So we'll butt this one up against that one. All right, now we're to the gable side of the roof here. And you notice we got our full course in and we have our overhang here. So we wanna trim this off. All right, so we're at our corner here. We wanna make sure we have tar all the way into the corner. So we're gonna bring this flush here. We're gonna nail both of these together right here. And then we will check our distance up here. All right, we're about to my Knuckle there and bring it to there. We'll give it a quick look underneath. It looks pretty straight. Drop a nail up top here. And we're good. Now these are the shingles that we're gonna be using, the GAF Timberline HDZ. These do have the copper in them to prevent um, moss growth or whatnot on the roof. This is what they look like. 
This actually matches the same shingles that we just had installed on our house. And then on the back side of your shingle, you notice you have this tar on here also. This is what helps the shingle adhere to the layer below it and along the eave side or gable side. So this should um, match up very closely with the tar that's on the starter strip. And once the roof gets warm, it should help keep these from kind of flopping up if we do get a windy day. All right, so your very first shingle that you put down um, needs to be full length. Your second shingle that you put down, we're gonna take six inches off of that. So here's our first one, here's our second. We're gonna take six off of here. Just mark it with our knife. It actually happens to be length of a knife perfectly. So you can speed things up instead of using a tape measure, doing that. And we cut from the back side to help preserve our blade. And you wanna make sure you cut all the way through, especially on these architectural shingles because it will tear. So this is our second shingle. We'll take these two. There's our first, there's our second. The next one we want to take 12 off. Here's our third shingle. Our next one we want to take 18 off. So we're just going up in increments of six. And we want to do five courses this way. And if you notice, when we stagger these, Now, you can see our six inch overlay, and then the next one we would wanna take 24 off. And that, I believe, actually ends up being this last piece. Not quite, very close though. All right guys, so we have our starter shingle on the entire perimeter of our roof. So we're gonna start our first row. Our first row is a full shingle, and all we need to do see if I can get this gun to stay here, um, is we want to bring this all the way over to the edge, basically, and we're going to match it to the starter shingle on the gable side here, and we're going to bring it flush with the bottom here. And you don't want to go too close, honestly, to either end here. That's probably a little close here. Um, the next one I'll be sure to go in probably about four inches. We're gonna go one here, I'm gonna put one there, and we're gonna put one there. All right, and then we have our next one that is cut six inches shorter, and we're gonna bring this, right? We don't wanna go to this white line here. We wanna bring this guy all the way up to this edge right here. We're gonna go in a little bit further this time though. Right there, right there, right there and right there. All right, and then we're gonna take our next one that is an additional six inches shorter, lay that on top of here, do the same thing. And then we're gonna repeat that until we get to that fifth course, and then we're gonna shingle the rest of the roof all the way over to the right. After we get that done, we're gonna start over with a full course, again, until we reach the top, and then we wrap over the top.
So this is why we stagger them, the six inch, right? Here's our next line here. I finished the first row all the way down. Now our next row that's coming on top, we're covering this seam here so water cannot get in there. And that's what you wanna look for and you wanna make sure that you avoid having rows, subsequent rows here that line up like this on the edge because you will damage your roof. All right guys, so if you stuck through the video so far, I appreciate it. And we have all of the shingles on. We're going to put our ridge cap on now. Um, you can either make the ridge cap out of shingles or you can buy it pre-made. Um, GAF makes it pre-made here and it is perforated just like the starter strip. All you do is bend it a couple times. and it comes off. All right guys, so we're installing our ridge cap now and you don't wanna just set this on here like this and nail back here because the front of this can lift up. So what you wanna do is your very first one is you wanna take it, this is the, the colored side here, this is the side that gets put underneath and you wanna cut just ahead of the tar line on here. Well actually, flip this over okay. just like that now having this like this makes this almost like a starter strip shingle and then save this piece for when you get to the other end of the roof you want to get 50 about 50 percent on either side here bring it right up to your edge and just two nails one on either side all right and then we take our next one We don't want to put it on this way. We don't want to put it this way with the tar line up. And we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to bring it right to the edge here, line it up, make sure we're about half on both sides. And then we're going to nail. Now, once the sun hits this and this relaxes and starts uh, sitting down flush on the roof, it's also going to warm up the tar sun's gonna warm up that tar and everything's gonna seal. So all we do now is we just work our way back to the opposite end of the roof. One more in here. I'm gonna match it up to the tabs again here. And then I bring it by just a little bit, not quite a quarter inch, maybe like an eighth. All right, we'll put a couple nails in here. All right, we're good there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna need to cut this where it normally it ends up where your your finished piece will get tar on both ends here so 
Um, this is a little long. We're gonna end up having to cut this. All right, so I mentioned the, the roof caulking. Uh, it's plastic roof cement. It's this roofer's choice stuff. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like four or five bucks for two of this. And we're gonna match it up here with the very end of the roof. We're gonna put a nail on either side. And then that piece that you saved, um, either from cutting this one off or from the very first step, is gonna cover this. Now, what you wanna do is take some roofing nails. Instead of using the roofing nailer, unless you're really confident that it's not gonna overdrive the nails, right? This is the last one. You don't wanna overdrive the nails and damage your shingle. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy here, we're gonna bring it right up to the edge, and we're gonna put four nails in this one here. And once again, you wanna make sure you match up on your end, bring it flush to the end, and we're gonna put four nails. You just wanna make sure that these are not lifted up, all right? And you're gonna take some of this roofing cement and cover this nail, all right? You're not gonna see this from the ground. So, apply a liberal amount on here, like that. Put a little bit more in this one. You don't want to see this nail head shining through this stuff. All right. And that's all there is to it.